Hello my lovelies, welcome back. Um, I've just filmed this skincare makeup. It's not a lot of makeup but it feels like a lot of makeup and I've actually taken the hair down out of the bun because I think you've seen enough of me with my hair scraped up. Um, and it's permanently scraped up because it's just too hot to have my hair down. I just thought I'd make an effort. Anyway, it is May. Well, no, it isn't. Well, yes, it still is, but we're right at the very end of May. So it's time for May favourites in this very strange world we're in, which we're sort of easing lockdown little by little. And some of us are feeling a little anxious about it. Some of us are sort of sensibly dealing with it. And the majority are just blatant idiots. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Um... I'm not going to get into politics. I had a little rant at the start of my this video. I'm not going to get into politics about what's been happening in the UK. Um, I've already mentioned what's been happening in um, America. And everything is just... Uh, sometimes it is an embarrassment to be human. It's as simple as that. Right, so May. May has been a mixed bag. Um... It's been absolutely lovely in the garden. Spent a lot of time in the garden, a lot of time with Betty. Really, um, the garden's coming to life. Everything's blossoming and blooming. My peony has decided it's gonna flower this year. You may remember last year it didn't because we had awful rain and it just completely stopped it opening. And I have this gorgeous peony that's potted Generally peonies are far happier in the ground, but there are one or two that are specially created so you can put them in a pot. And mine has abundance of leaves and one flower every year. And last year she didn't bloom, but she has this year. So I'm happy about that. And I've just about got the lawn back. Um, I had about 70% of my lawn missing thanks to all the horrible, horrible rain we had over the winter. And I've gradually... Who's texting me? And I've gradually, with a little help from Craig, um, got the lawn back. So it's lovely to see. Uh, and Betty's happy as well because she likes her lawn. Right, May favourite. Mixed bag, as I say. It's been highs and it's been massive, massive lows and really, really tough tough times, um, very emotional times. Um, so yeah, it, it's been an odd one. I'm kind of happy to see it go, but there's bits of it that I will miss. Um, anyway, I have a few items, a few favourites. The one thing I've neglected has been my reading because my favourite, I'm going to start with it, is something I've rediscovered. Now I used to do this in my 20s. I've always been a bit of an old lady in a young body, always. And my mother used to say I was born at the wrong time completely. I should have been born in the 40s and 50s. I've always liked the old fashioned things. And one of the things I used to do in my 20s was embroidery. My mum taught me a lot of stitches. I had the embroidery rings and all the threads. And I always kept them, never got rid of them. And I just thought, oh, actually, I wouldn't mind seeing if I still enjoyed doing embroidery. So I got the rings out, the few threads I had left, and I've really got into it. Unfortunately, so much so that my reading has taken a back seat, so I need to find a happy medium. So I have an example of, um, this was the first one I did. I remembered some of the stitches. The beautiful thing now is that we have YouTube, because when I first started embroidery, there was no such thing as YouTube. Can you believe it? Um... But now I've got YouTube, which not only reminded me of some stitches, but has taught me that there are so blinking many now. So, so many. Who's texting me? But this is the first thing that I created. If you can see it there. It's as big as my head. And it was lovely. I totally zoned out. Really, really loved doing that so that's what I've been doing and then I started a second one and the needle is still in situ because it isn't finished yet but we're getting there and this one's on some white 
and that's what I've been doing. So you can get different size rings and things, different threads, all that, but it's been absolutely joyous. That's a lovely word, it has, it's been absolutely joyous to do this again. So relaxing, really just calms the mind, feels very creative because I'm working with colour, which is what I love. Um, and it's been nice to sort of remember and reminisce um, about learning to embroider because even as a child I, I didn't have a lot of patience. My mother tried to teach me to knit and I was just, no, no. If it's too difficult, no. I have to be able to do it instantly or I, I can't do it. Um, very self-defeatist. Embroidery, I don't know, I just flew with it, loved it. And again, it's been lovely to do it. Um, Although some Craig was telling one of his family, oh yeah, Becky's doing origami. <laughs> no, embroidery. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing, that. Um, TV wise, we are watching the last series of Shit's Creek. If you haven't watched it, just watch it for Catherine O'Hara. She is an absolute delight. We just adore her and it always makes us laugh. So that's on Netflix. We've been watching that on Netflix. Um, Who's texting me? We also watched, it used to be on TV a long, long time ago, called Being Human. Um, it's got Russell Tovey in it. It's got Aidan Thingy from Paul Dark, you know, dark and brooding. And he plays a vampire. Russell Tovey plays a werewolf. Mm -hmm. And then, I can't remember the name of the actress, she plays a ghost. Um, but it was before all the vampire, werewolfy films were out before all that and it was quite unique in its time it's got a really good cast mm -hmm. so we've been watching that because we both enjoyed it originally i think we watched it again a few years ago and now we've watched that so we've done that what else very little else because we've just been outside doing to be honest yeah outside doing um and as i say unfortunately my reading is sort of ground to a halt so i need to rectify that mm. and i have some products to share with you because there's so few but there are some that i have been loving this one um palmer's cocoa butter formula i used to slather myself in this in my younger days and i can remember at nursery somebody saying to me you smell like chocolate this is the firming butter um the only reason i got this was that's all i could get i was looking for the big container of just their cocoa butter and I couldn't get one but I could get this and it's lovely because my skin has been quite bad on my legs and arms and this has worked an absolute treat mm. and I do like smelling like a bar of chocolate if you don't want to smell sweet this is maybe not the body moisturizer but it is very very good and it has mm. moisturized my legs within a couple of days they were far better condition um, I love it shea butter collagen and elastin and it's free of parabens mm. there we go so that's a huge favorite i'm whacking that on morning and night this was sent to me by my friend it's from Cordily. um i don't know if they still have it it's their fig fragrance beautiful bottle but it just smells it has a sweetness but it has that depth that figs have you know quite a heavy aftertone now i like a fragrance that's out there it's not a light airy floral fragrance so if you like things very very light and subtle it may not be for you but i love this in the day and i sort of smell it and it just has that bite that i really love um so thank you to my lovely friend for sending this because i adore it this has appeared an awful lot but i have literally just decided that this is the only one i can use a lot of the concealers that I love just don't seem to be working in the current sort of how the lights change, my skin tone. Um, I have caught a lot of the sun, even though I am using SPF. This is what happens with my Welsh heritage. Um, but I found one concealer that I can use and I'm not looking in the mirror at the end of the day and looking really white and stark and it's Glossier. I have G9 which correlates with their original medium. It's creamy, it blends beautifully, it has a good tone. It doesn't have a chalky undertone. 
and it's great if you just want to even out little areas of the face rather than whacking on a lot of foundation so i've been using that that's if i've been putting makeup on generally it's been spf and that's your lot and then this which i have loved again origins ginseng um, this is their SPF 14, it's their Tinted Moisturiser. Starts out as a white cream and it blends to your skin tone. It works quite well in the early summer months with me. However, as my skin tone gets stronger, it starts to look a little bit white. It looks chalky and quite obvious, so I have to stop using it and generally I move on to the Estee Lauder Tinted Moisturiser. But initially, I like this because it evens out the skin, it feels very lightweight, and I just need a little bit of the concealer to just even everything out and make everything, you know, acceptable. Um, but a great love after finding this in my drawer. And I have edited out an awful lot. I edited out a lot of makeup last week. I just went sort of obsessive and thought, right, let's be a bit aggressive and get rid of things that I'm not going to use. Um, lipsticks and things you can't really pass on to other people so i've had a really big sort out and my lot is getting less and it feels good because one thing lockdown has taught me is how little i need this feels like a lot of makeup at the moment because i've not really been wearing any so when i'm putting things on like concealer and mascara and lipstick it feels an awful lot and when i think of normal which is foundation and blusher and bronzer and concealer and maybe eyeliner and then lots of eyeshadow and you know highlighter i can't imagine how my face copes under the weight of it all um so less is definitely more at the moment anything else to tell you let's not talk about let's talk about how lovely the weather is where i am and how lovely it is to see the sea and mm. yes but let's not talk about the people we're having to deal with that are coming mm. to the sea it's not it's not pretty um and i'll just get angry and ranty and i'm determined not to do that in this video because i did it in another one um, Betty's very well. We've had a wonderful time. Um, she's doing very well with the heat, but she's very she's very sensible in that she'll do a little bit of sunshine and then she'll take herself into the shade. And we have a special cool mat for her, and obviously lots of water everywhere. And we have fans. Um, but yeah, she's very very sensible when it comes to the heat and everything because bulldogs do struggle. Any animal that has sort of the flat face, it's harder for them in the hot weather. And if we take her for a walk, I'm sort of out in the morning about half six, seven anyway. Um, when it's still cool, she can have a paddle in the water and just dry off as we're coming home. But she's here snoring, as you can hear. Yes. But Betty's very, very well. And coped very well because Craig went back to work. And of course, she'd had Craig's attention for about six weeks and was completely spoilt rotten. And then he went back to work. The first day she was a bit, what's, what's going on? Where's, where's the man of the house who has all the time in the world to play with me? Um, and then she was fine. It's sort of back into normal routine for us. So she's done very, very well. Other than that, yes, all good. Um, the usual, achy joints, just everything aches at the moment. Um, I have been doing quite a lot in the garden. I did lift eight bags of gravel into the shed proper northern lass you know um and then the next day I thought oh I shouldn't have done that but I don't know anybody else who's sort of you know 40s heading to their 50s perimenopausal menopausal I don't know whatever you want to call it do you find do you have joint issues bearing in mind that I don't take anything I'm not on HRT or anything like that um do you find that you just have aching legs and arms and shoulders and just sometimes everything aches? And it doesn't stop me doing anything. I mean, I'm still mowing the lawn and doing my normal jobs and I kind of put it to the back of my mind. But when I get into bed, I just think I hurt so much. Is that normal? Because some friends have said, oh, yeah, the joint thing is quite common with perimenopausal menopausal of course i don't know whether i am i think quite sensibly i kind of know i am but you know 
um, doctors never want to guarantee anything these days. Mm. But I would be interested to know. I just feel that, yeah, I'll have leg pain or ankle pain or my wrist will hurt or an elbow or a shoulder. Um, feel like I'm falling apart. But if anybody's in that situation and you've had similar symptoms and you know that they are, you know, part of it all, just let me know. I'm just interested to know. Um, and if it goes away, that would be great. If it stays with you, I'd like to be prepared. You know, all, all information, um, welcome. Thank you so much. And that's it. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. I've been talking to friends on the phone, FaceTiming, that kind of thing. I've not Zoomed yet. Craig Zooms a lot because he has meetings and things. Um, I've not partaken of Zoom, but lots of chatting on the phone and things. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. I feel like I should have lots more to tell you, but I haven't. If you want to see other things, I do tweet on Instagram. Probably tweet more at the moment. I've not really put anything on Instagram for a long time. Stories, yes. Instagram stories. I pop things up. Um, I did take the comments off. One or two people have sent me other messages elsewhere saying I can't comment on your stories. Um, I just, yeah. There were just too many comments coming in. And you do sometimes get, you know these Captain Americas, these chappies, hello there, beautiful. And I'm just like, no, I, I just don't want to keep filtering that out. So I turned comments off, but you can still see stories and things. Um, but I'm sorry about that. I just got tired of all the, yeah, the fishing chaps, not interested. Um, and I think that's all. So yeah, if you want to go to Instagram, I will try and put a few more pictures up. Um, Twitter, as I say, um, YouTube, of course. I've kept this going throughout lockdown because it's brought me immense pleasure keeping up with everybody. But that's it. That's sort of May. Into June we go. Um, and that's all, folks. I hope you're all well. I hope life is not too scary for you if you've had to go back to work. If you've got children and you're having to deal with the dilemma of sending them to school or not, I've got friends that are in exactly the same position and it is hell. So I, I just hope that, you know, it, it sort of falls a way that you're all happy with and the best for you and your family. Um, I know a lot of people have gone through some really horrible times. A lot of people have been losing people for various reasons, not just the COVID. And it's been really tough. They've lost family and they've not been able to go to the funerals. Um, but I just hope that somewhere there's a little bit of sunshine for you um, to brighten your day and maybe help with things because it's hard enough. Right, my lovelies, thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. I do appreciate them. But I send lots of love, um, social distance hugs and I will see you all very, very soon.